hallelujah, snap your knee and kiss your grandmother on the cheek because it is that time of year. Yes, it is convention time. Yesterday afternoon, uh, they released the, uh, the convention, the Friday morning uh, session. So we are going to be getting into it. I've already watched it once because uh, the last time I tried to do a rebuttal video, I got so bored because I tried to do each and every point. And I'm, if I'm falling asleep, you guys are falling asleep. So I actually watched through it. That way I can uh, skip and, uh, you know, cut things so that way we can keep it alive and moving forward. Uh, it is a real whopper. I think this uh, convention is going to be a colossal flop for Watchtower. And just in this uh, first video they've released, we had a horrible, y yucky, cringy, whatever word you want to call it, um, video on homosexuals and why we need to respect Jehovah's Witnesses' rights to be bigots. Apparently that's something that we need to do. Uh, there was some anime in one of the music videos, so that was pretty cool, and a lot of Stephen Lett just being himself, which is always pretty great. And uh, also one of the things I noticed, at least in the beginning, was their use of illustrations is just gone completely in the toilet. So I want to try and highlight at least those few things in this video. So with all of that being said, please drop a like on this video. It takes one second and it helps it get out to more people on the YouTube and I very much appreciate it. If you're not subscribed already, consider subscribing as we're going to be doing the entire convention this year. So let's do this. So they've got the Planet Earth film crew here. They couldn't quite manage to book David Attenborough for the background, but it's okay because it is a Watchtower music video anyway. Uh, besides how beautiful these shots are, and there was a lot before this, so feel free to watch the whole thing if you want. Um, they, they were really incredible shots, and they didn't do any video credits that I noticed, but I could have just missed it for some reason or another. But uh, my goodness, from all over the world, those are very expensive uh, uh, shots that they're getting with very expensive equipment. It is a very interesting use of dedicated funds. But the thing that really stands out here is how, you know it's a convention, so the mental, emotional, I shouldn't say mental, emotional manipulation is going to just be slapping Jehovah's Witnesses. I mean, just like old Rock'em Sock'em, just wailing on each other. And they start right away. They start with, of course, Ukrainian as the language that they introduce first. Now, oftentimes they, they um, will do this in various different languages from all over the world, but they want you to get your emotions involved because of all of the human suffering that is happening currently in the Ukraine. So it's really astonishing that they just don't waste any time and it's like, okay, let's get them within the first 20 seconds. Let's, let's do this thing. Wouldn't expect anything less. Thank you, Watchtower. Je commence ma journée quand s'éveille le soleil. Je m'en vais par les rues, les yeux pleins de sommeil. Je prie, je souris aux passants en prêchant mon espoir. L'un s'arrête un instant, l'autre fuit mon regard. C'est ainsi pour mon Dieu, pour mon Père. Choisi cette vie, ce qu'il veut, je suis prêt à le faire. I've skipped ahead about four minutes or so. Yes, you heard that correctly. This is a very long music video with a lot more to go. But anyway, I digress. I couldn't believe just how accurate this was. So when they show the two people coming to do the cart witnessing, they're not stopping and talking to anyone. And I like when they actually show like a realistic 
version of a Jehovah's Witness activity. Don't show them like with hordes of people as if they're Paul standing in the Acropolis, you know, holding forth and, and really having a religious discussion. No, it's just two people standing there smiling in a really weird way like this. And when someone says, oh, hello, they're like, oh, hi, hi, and they're like speechless. It's like a 14-year-old boy that's just gone over to his friend's house, and he realizes he has a sister, and he's just like, oh, man, I'm nervous. There's a girl around. Oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> that's the usual reaction you'll get from a Jehovah's Witness if you actually show interest. And then the other part of it was showing the little kids out in service, and, you know, they were all happy and cheery and woohoo, let's do some preaching, baby. But then at the end... They were getting ice cream. Now, if you've ever spent any significant time preaching as a Jehovah's Witness and you pioneered with people that had kids, you would know that the number one thing kids look forward to is when are we going to go on break? As soon as they get in the car, you strap them into their car seat like, are we going on break? And they'll be like two years old. Break? 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 Because they get a snack. They get a treat. Because they want to make a service fun and the ministry fun for the kids. So again, Watchtower did this very accurately. It showed them excited and having fun, but it's because they got ice cream. If you remove the ice cream, those kids are going to be crying, just going ragdolling themselves, be just putting up a whole fuss at the door. I've had it all happen to me before, and it's absolutely pandemonium. But I enjoyed that they showed the real reason why kids have fun out in service. Je ma journée quand s'endort le soleil fatigué mais heureux j'ai des joies sans pareil et je prie j'ai la vie qui me plaît car je donne Shoutouts to Watchtower for getting a little bit playful with it. Uh, you know, not starting things off all doom, gloom, dark days are here. But, you know, they got some anime in there for us nerds in the crowd. So, I really like it. I think they did a good job. And uh, the visuals were pretty interesting. So, very cool. Good job. Nothing but praise for Watchtower so far. Maybe this won't be so bad. <laughs> Now, I know not all of you guys are the savants of sight and the ninjas of nitpicking like I am. So let me just run that quick clip back for you because there's a lot of interesting little tiny details that happen all in here. So we'll pick it up right when the guy uh, gets up and he spikes the volleyball. Now, as you can see, this is a, a, a woman on the other side, a, a sister, ostensibly, because I'm sure they're all Jehovah's Witnesses. And as he goes up to spike it, she clearly starts to cover her face. She's like, wow, this is a grown man getting up <coughs> and just gonna, gonna dunk it right on my head. So then this guy jumps up and you can see by her body language, she's even like backing away like, no, don't blast me. Like full on meet the parents style when he just jumps up and she has a horrible bloody nose. So then you, this guy's thinking, ooh, yes, it's my time in the sun. They're gonna, we got the whole Watchtower film crew out here and I'm gonna look like a real cool dude. All the sisters that come through Bethel will hear about this spike from around the world. The shot heard from around the world 2.0, I might say. But then we have a surprise contender that swoops in like some sort of Mr. Miyagi. So Mr. Miyagi comes in here and hits it with the old crouching tiger hidden claw and boom manages to return it and the girl's face if you kind of look you can see she's laughing and i'm sure that she's laughing because he probably he maybe he even says something like boom and then it comes back to him so then it comes back and then you can see he's about to jump up and they just cut away but all those little micro interactions i just thought it would be fun and uh yeah that was probably pretty stupid and pointless but you know what so are these, so why not have a laugh while we're doing it? Soon. 
So I found this to be pretty interesting because they're sort of portraying this whole situation of these ancient writers writing this down, being preserved over time, and then the people that were making the New World Translation using the oldest and best and most coherent uh, manuscripts, using the, the latest in, in scholarly research in order to come up with the very best translation that they could. But this simply is not the case. Now, I will give credit where credit's due. The old version of the New World Translation is not nearly as bad. It's it's all it's all right. It's decent. There, there's there's some good. There's some horrible. But it, it's all right. This new one is just sad and pathetic. It's it's truly amazing how how manipulative their new version of the Bible is. Even to someone that's not a scholar, you can just look at something that's translated in the New World Translation. Look at every other Bible out there. And it says something fundamentally different. And then you ask yourself, okay, well, why is the you know, New World Translation say this particular thing? Well, it's because the Jehovah's Witnesses will have a particular peculiar belief and they've molded and shaped their Bible in order to sort of sandwich that in between their cognitive dissonance and their not wanting their lives to fall apart. And it's so really, really aggravating because I never, even when it was released and I was still a witness for a couple of years, I never even used that new Bible because it was so bad. Even as a believing Jehovah's Witness, it just sounded like if you went to like a, a children's section in a bookstore and they had like my first Bible or something, it just, it's felt so watered down and the meanings of things just completely like, you know what, let's nuts to what it actually says, nuts to what we're trying to show you in this video, because don't get it twisted. What they're trying to demonstrate in this video is that, no, we did the scholarship, we did the research, we did the hard work, and we realized we didn't like it, so we just changed it. But they won't tell you that very last part. Anyway, I thought that this, uh, the music section would be all wrapped up and spanked on the bottom after about five minutes. But no, it takes 13 minutes and 20 seconds in order to get to the, uh, the first talk. So let us bring in uh, Stephen Lett and hear some of the things he has to say. It is my great pleasure to warmly welcome all of you and to say Shalom. We are very pleased that you're with us, and we assure you, you will not be disappointed. To the contrary, you'll be glad you were able to devote three days to learning what the Bible says about how to gain and maintain peace in all areas of your life. This Jehovah is saying, do not be anxious over anything. Would Jehovah tell us to do something it was impossible for us to do? No. But obviously, he's talking about not being overly anxious. So I've cut out about five minutes of his talk here and just given you uh, some of the quick cliff notes. He says hello and uses the term shalom. And then he reads a verse where it says, you know, don't be anxious over anything. And then proceeds to tell people how what the scripture says isn't what it means. And it's really funny to me that whenever you have these moments when the Bible just says something, don't be anxious over anything. Well, God wouldn't ask us to do something. So clearly, that's not what it really means. Maybe that's what it did mean. Or maybe it was some uh, kind of stoic philosophy that snuck its way into the Bible. Who really knows where this particular passage comes from? But... I just find it funny when it's like something doesn't make sense. It's like, well, I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling worried. But God says that I shouldn't feel that way. Well, how can I make a balance? Well, you, you idiot moron peon brain, you can't do it. But this genius, 
this gigantic brain that transcends time and space can give you the full download. He'll hit you with the up, down, left, right, L, R, start, back, and you will get that cheat code and have 99 stats on, on everything. <laughs> like, it's so amazing, the arrogance that they have, where it's like, yeah, the Bible says that, but it's not what it really means. Let me tell you all about it. Instead of just saying, well, that scripture doesn't make sense. Hmm. Has to be explained. But now, what does the scripture mean when it says that this peace of God surpasses all understanding? Well, we could say that it's so amazing, so powerful, that we limited humans cannot fully understand it. Oh, I just love seeing this guy <laughs> go on two opposites of the spectrum here. On, in one hand, you know, the Bible says something that doesn't make sense. Well, he comes down and gives you the hidden jitsu. And then in the other hand, it's like something doesn't make sense. Well, some things are just beyond our understanding. So, ah, shucks. Fooey patootie. Really wish we could have gotten that one, boys. Well, the Greek word translated guard is a military term that evokes a mental picture of soldiers maintaining a day and night watch in the same way. See, this piece of God can act like a 24-hour guard over our hearts and mental powers. Imagine if our boy Stephen Lett here was actually Merriam-Webster, and whenever you went to a dictionary, it would say, guard. It evokes a mental image of someone guarding something for 24 hours, day and night, straight. That had to be the worst definition like what does he what does he have to bring in the greek for <laughs> like it doesn't add anything it's just meant to like make people think it sounds like fancy or that he really looked into it <laughs> but he's not saying anything other than what he's come up with himself oh i just found that massively entertaining so i cut out another big section of his talk because uh it's literally something that's going to get its whole video its own separate video later like literally he's just saying word for word what the point is in the video so i don't know why they had it in there it makes no sense it's like if i put this exact same segment like 20 minutes later in this video you'd kind of just be like okay that was weird you'd assume it was an editing error <laughs> which is very likely. The simple answer is, Jehovah gives peace to those who draw close to him and want to follow his guidance. So receiving peace from Jehovah starts with living a clean life, following Jehovah's righteous moral standards. Now the question he's answering here is, who gets this peace from God? And his solution is those that do what I say because there are other people that think that they have the monopoly on what God wants, what is clean, what is moral, what is right, and what is wrong. And there are hundreds of thousands of people all claiming this moral authority, and they're using as a foundation for their claim that they have some kind of special relationship with God. And this is exactly what he's doing. This is no different than you would hear in any other religion. And it just doesn't make sense to me because if I were God, I would set up a system and I, would, I can control anything so I can make sure it's perfect. That was undeniable that it maximized human happiness. No one could ever say that, hey, following these rules it is less advantageous. It will make you less sad or it'll make you less happy. Doing your own thing, it won't work. I would set up a system like that. But what has God done? He hasn't set up this miraculous utopia where everyone can say, wow, this is just a better way of living. I guess I should follow this because you know what? It absolutely maximizes human happiness. Many people in Satan's world, as you know, believe that God will accept them as they are. That God, in effect, will lower his standard to accommodate them. Can you imagine such pride? That would be like a pot telling its maker, the potter, how the pot must be used. And the potter must accept this whether he likes it or not. Well, we know it doesn't work that way, does it? 
So this really ties into what I said at the outset of this, uh, this talk. He's like, hey, imagine how much pride you would need to have for saying, well, God will accept me for who I am. That's like a potter that is talking to the or the pot talking to the potter it's a it's dumb illustration anyway illustration bad illustration number three are we on now i can't remember anyway we saw at the outset here or i talked about at the outset here how this guy literally will just tell you what the bible says and if the bible doesn't say that thing that he thinks it says he will change it now that is the ultimate if you are a religious person and if you do believe that the bible has the sacro 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 sacrosanct how can you say sacrosanctity sacrosanctity i don't think that's a word but by golly it should be <laughs> but you believe that this bible has a, a special uh, place and value and that it is legitimately the word of god and you have someone that comes in and butchers it I mean, just brings in, not just like white out, but like a whole big ass like paintbrush and is just jumbling the whole thing and making no sense of it. In Stephen Lett's mind, someone that did that would be absolutely the most proud, prideful person in the world. He would denounce that. If you asked him, if, if Stephen Lett ever went door banging and... That sounds weird, but anyway, um, if Stephen Lett ever was ever in the field ministry and you asked him, like, hey, what do you think about people? I was disgruntled by my church because they released a new version of the Bible. And there were scriptures that fundamentally contradicted some of the teachings of the church, and so they just changed the Bible to fit that. And I was pretty disgruntled, so I don't know. What do you think about that? He would absolutely jump on this opportunity and be like, oh, no, Jehovah's Witnesses would never do that. We uphold the highest integrity when it comes to our translation. <laughs> like, that is, you guys get what I'm saying. I'm, I'm rambling on at this point. But it is incredible that he has no self-awareness, that he can't see he is the thing that he is denouncing. He's literally the embodiment of the thing he's denouncing, and he just doesn't see it. Now, why doesn't he see it? I can tell you why. Pride. There is no peace, says Jehovah, for the wicked. Or put another way, those who wickedly set their own moral standards will receive no peace from Jehovah and will not have peaceful lives. So this certainly should be seen in the context that there are, you know, young people here in their early teens, you know, 10 years, in a very impressionable age. These words, uh, as they're starting to grow, and this is like their religion, and this is their community, and this is their family, and they're just sort of taking their first little baby steps into the social dynamics and they see these people as the most powerful, influential people of their lives. What they say controls everything. And what he said here is that you will not find peace unless you accept his standards. Well, who sets those standards? Me and my buds. So if you don't listen to me, you will find not, you will not find, find not, not find, find, will not, will you find peace. God, I don't know why I can't talk. Maybe it's because it's a little stuffy in here. Maybe I should grab a fan. That would help. Anyway. <clears throat> so it's really disturbing to think about all of those very impressionable young ones that are here and hearing these things. And it's like soaking in like, whoa, if I ever leave the Jehovah's Witnesses, I'll just not be happy. And that's what keeps people in for longer than they otherwise would stay in because they have this absolute fear of the world oh my goodness this is valhalla you know this is the paradise spiritually speaking why would i want to go down into hell why would i want to go out there and it's like escape from new york style like this that sounds horrible i would rather just hang out and stay in my peaceful little circle and that's what i did for a long time until my intellectual integrity took over and said hey you got to do something about this because you just disagree with too many things here. And it, it's really sad, though, that they're using this very emotional, um, uh, triggering language. 
And it's going to affect these young people in the audience in this very way, where they're just paralyzed from actually uh, leaving the organization. We could say that his blessing on our effort is somewhat like mul multiplication. What do we mean? Well, if we put forth no effort, there's nothing for Jehovah to multiply. See, what is 10 times zero? Zero. Okay, I think I got it. A hundred times zero. Uh, yeah, I got it the first time. A thousand times zero. Okay, I, I, a hundred percent, I got it. Yeah, comedy works in threes. You're trying to be funny. So threes company, threes enough, we're good. A million times zero. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! We still have zero. So if we don't do anything, Jehovah has nothing to multiply. So just in the first talk, and we are off to a banging start on our bad illustration counter. I'm sure in post there will be some magical youtube way of having something appear on the screen and we'll make it work, but my golly, that is so bad. <laughs> like, it's like trying to multiply by zero. You can't do it. But no, he, he has to say, it's like if you tried to multiply zero by ten, it would be zero. What about by a hundred? Zero. By a thousand? Zero. A million! Whoa, whoa, we're not going to a million, are we? Hi, are, are we ready to go to plaid mode here? I gotta, where's my seatbelt on this ship? <laughs> oh my goodness. Their illustrations are just so laughable. It brings me great pleasure to bring them to you, the fine people of YouTube. And if you're enjoying this video, hey, why don't you uh, go and make a comment down below and say, hey, I'm enjoying this video. Hi, Wally, cool shirt, or something like that. And uh, if you do that, I'll, I'll reply to your comment and I'll say, yo, what up? And that'll be our little lovely interchange. <laughs> hey, and while you're down there commenting, don't forget to like and subscribe. Illustrate this if we can. Imagine that you're working very hard to paint the outside of your house. And a good friend comes to help you. Now you're painting together. But then you decide, I'll just go back in the house and I'll just take it easy. Well, how long will your friend keep painting? If he continued painting, He's no longer a helper. He's doing the job for you. Oh, man, the good times just keep on rolling here with these bad illustrations. <laughs> Hoo-wee! That was a real humdinger he hit us with. I like how he actually has an opportunity to like say something funny and give a funny illustration. You know, maybe get the audience a little bit uh, jazzed or, you know, a little bit hyped up. No, he chooses painting. And the guy goes inside, so the illustration here is pretty much, hey, if there's an asshole that asks his friend to come help him paint his house and he just doesn't do any work, the guy's kind of a jerk. <laughs> like, he could have at least said it in a funnier way, but no, just, just gotta keep it boring. When a sleeping baby is suddenly awakened in the middle of the night by a loud noise, he becomes frightened, does he? And he cries out for help. But when a parent cuddles him and soothes him with reassuring words, he calms down immediately. Well, David, at Psalm 55, 16 through 18, said that when he was troubled, he called out to God. You have big, strong David, the one that when he was merely just a boy, he, he killed a, a grizzly bear, maybe two of them, and a lion with his bare hands. He, he took down a 10-foot super giant, uh, someone straight out of the Marvel Universe that had just found his way onto the planet with nothing but a slingshot and his quick wits. And yet, he cries like a little baby, looking to be swaddled and give me my warm milk. Pfft. David, what a loser. I can't believe I once looked up to that guy. <laughs> what a loser now. Thank you for telling us the truth, Stephen. We all needed to know that he was nothing but a little bitch baby. In the following video, Brother Kenneth Cook of the Governing Body will explain how this convention program will help us to pursue peace. On behalf of the Governing Body, I can say that we really appreciate your attending this Pursue Peace convention. 
And on behalf of the audience, I'm sure I'm not the only one here, I just want to say thank you for getting away from that god-awful blue screen. I am so tired of seeing these lame, boring talks with their bad illustrations given on the same blue screen. It drives me crazy. So thank you very much for changing it up. We got a little happy music, some trees, and the beautiful lake, whatever it's called. Lake Watchtower, that's what they should have named it. Yeehaw. Speaking of peace, we love the serene setting here at our world headquarters on Blue Lake in New York State. At times, the water is as smooth as a mirror. We occasionally see eagles and hawks fly by. And in the fall of the year, when the leaves change colors, the forest can look spectacular. More important than this tranquil setting, though, is the abundant peace that Jehovah has given to his organization. I can't imagine that there's going to be a lot of people that are super excited in the audience to see this whole building and like with the music and him talking about how peaceful and tranquil it is and you're in the audience and you're a, a single mom that is trying to pioneer doesn't have an education is struggling to get by and you're just constantly ha getting beaten over the head by watchtower with all of their ridiculous rules and it's difficult for you to find a partner because that's how it works in Jehovah's Witness world. And your life's just kind of like sad. And you're trying to pretend to be happy for other people. Oh, I'm a pioneer, so I'm, I feel great. And then you see this guy who is just living his dream on a compound on a lake. And it's all peaceful and he's talking about how great it is. And it's like, wait... So I do all of this free work for Watchtower and I donate my money and it's so you can live in this lavish, like really, really, really lavish setting. I don't know like what the governing body members, their rooms look like. I can't imagine they're, you know, in a one bedroom apartment. That's like some sort of standard Bethel uh, accommodations. But hey, I don't know if anyone out there in YouTube land, uh, let me know. We can say this because of the peace and harmony that unite us, no matter what our nationality, language, race, tribe, or social background is. This is truly spectacular, especially when we consider all the turmoil in the world and how divided people are politically, socially, and religiously. So Kenneth Cook here is giving us a little lesson on peace and pointing to these examples of the International Convention. One of them, interestingly enough, was at the uh, Olympic uh, Center in Athens. So that that complex there, that whole that whole stadium was ridiculously expensive to be built. Uh, if my memory serves me correctly, because I heard this when it first happened and I just found it so shocking, but I think it was a hundred and 30 million euros that it cost just to build that roof when they updated it before the 20, uh, 2004 Olympic Games, 24, I can't remember the year, but anyway, I just, it was such a staggering number, and I just wonder how much it cost, because that must have been some mean pesos going out to cover the cost of renting that out, and they had an international convention there in 2014, and in 2019 right before everything sort of shut down so a lot of money being spent uh by watchtower and he's talking about you know this piece and you always just get this sense of yeah we get like you all hug each other and someone has got his polka outfit on from germany and someone else has got like a cowboy hat and boots because they've come from america and they're, you know, shaking hands and swapping service stories. But couldn't you guys be doing just a little bit more to actually help with, like, peace when it comes to social justice, equality, actually having programs and institutions that benefit people, whether that be with, with housing or financial support or maybe they need a family care, lots of different aspects that they could choose. I mean, they don't have to be like out there on the front lines like a freaking Jedi trying to work up his DPM. 
for the non-nerds out there, that's droids per minute. But anyway, they don't have to be like going wacko mode. But if they could just do a little something, it would look better from a PR standpoint. But no, they just play you a little seven second clip of some people dressing in some goofy clothes and hugging each other. Sings from Jehovah. Can you see why Pursue Peace was well chosen as the theme for this year's convention? To pursue something means to chase it in order to capture it. Because of the influence of Satan, his wicked world, and our own imperfections, peace is constantly trying to elude us. Therefore, we have to chase after it to capture it in our lives. So I basically just skipped over his entire talk because he's basically just previewing the uh, convention. And honestly, which will be made apparent here pretty soon, but this whole first like 45 minutes is all just a giant preview. They're kind of saying the same things that they're going to say earlier. He just like broke down the program and then Stephen Lett's going to break it down again. But you're probably asking yourself, well, why did you include this clip, Wally? He didn't say anything and it was really boring. But maybe you caught it as the, uh, what, what, what was I, the savant? Oh, I forgot to put my hat on. Oh, well, I guess this clip is hatless. Uh, what am I, the savant of sight and the ninja of nitpicky? But I, uh, I noticed that there was a boat driving in the background and it just kind of caught my attention because I'm like, I wonder, like, is that some Jehovah's Witness security boat out there because he is giving a talk and they don't want some apostates coming with a loudspeaker or something? I was just curious, like, what this boat was all about. But anyway, I guess the world may never know. The world may never know if I'll be wearing a hat in the next clip either. We warmly thank Brother Cook for highlighting some of the ways this convention program will help us to pursue peace. But now, let's briefly preview the convention program that is coming our way. So this, to me, is good evidence that they are just running out of shit to say because they brought in Kenneth Cook to do a preview of the convention and talk about, you know, this, the, the concept of the pursue peace and everything. Sorry, if you're wondering why I'm grimacing randomly or making weird sounds, it's because my leg hurts. Anyway, but after they use like an entire segment, then he says, you know, thank you so much, Brother Cook. Now let's preview the convention. I'm like, okay, we are 32 minutes in and we are barely off the ground here. Let's pick it up, guys, because people are going to be getting pretty bored. Just as a lion devours prey and assimilates it into his body, Satan tries to get us to succumb to temptations so he can devour us and assimilate us into his world. We just, we just have to highlight the bad illustrations because it's just too fun not to. <laughs> I'm not quite sure, Mr. Led, if you're aware of this, but... Uh, most things that are eating, it's to assimilate it into their, into their body and, you know, to get nourish mint. So, I guess a lion, you like that? The lion's okay? And then it's like, he doesn't do it to integrate you into his body, but into his world. It's just such a clumsy, bad illustration, but I'm sure glad he said it. Today... We can't even imagine feeding a wolf and a lamb together. If we tried such, it would likely result in lamb chops for the wolf. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Another classic illustration from Stephen Lett. Man, that one was a real a gut buster. I was My cheeks hurt after I heard him do that one. I bet he tells that at all his cocktail parties he just never attended. That will be followed by the talk. Young people choose a path that leads to peace. And that talk will encourage our dear young ones to pursue the full-time ministry. I'm pretty much skipping this entire thing because he's just giving us a preview, which we kind of already heard a little bit, but I cut that out too because I don't like previews. And I've only cut it here just to say that. I don't like previews. I'm going to come out and say it. If I'm watching a TV show and they say, next week on this... I'm like freaking out trying to find the remote under bags of popcorn because I'm like, I don't want to see. I like to go in fresh. If it's something I am already know I'm going to watch, like if it's a movie that's going to come out and I'm like, yep, probably going to see that. Not going to look at reviews. I just want to go in fresh. Some people just like, they can't get enough of these previews. And he 
is one of them. So anyway, we've learned something about Stephen Lett is he actually only watches the previews and never actually watches the entire movie. He just assumes what's going to happen because he's just that smart. And now we've all learned something. And we want to say to you, dear young ones, if you do this, you will enjoy a happy life and you will have no regrets. Uh, it's kind of like the contrast between bitter and sweet. His reptilian brain just can't even, can't even find a good one on something so simple. He can't just say something that would actually be funny to listen to. Like, it's, the, it's like the difference between eating a warhead, which is super sour, and a oh so smooth and chocolatey creamy Hershey's Kiss. Like, he can't even give us a modicum of comedy. It's just, it's like the difference between bitter and sweet. That's what I came up with. I have been writing this talk for a year. Golly. Now, if we think about it, we're not born as friends of God because we're born as sinful offspring of Adam. Actually, if you think about it, we're born as enemies of God. Sometimes you'll hear people say of a little baby, look at that little angel. But more accurate would be to say, look at that little enemy of God. I think I have an entire video where I cosplayed as Stephen Lett, and the whole theme of it was that he doesn't like kids. It's been well documented. Every time he speaks up and opens his mouth about kids, he seems to say just the oddest things. And I've noticed more often than usual, it seems like he's more tied to his notes for whatever reason. Maybe it's just because he's trying to organize and go through all of these different talks. I've Again, I've cut out probably at least 10 minutes of him talking about like all what's going to happen day by day by day anywho this let's get to what he actually says i think this is a moment where he might have gotten off script because he wasn't tied to his notes and he was looking right at the audience and it was almost like it was like no nah, this is this is what goes on in my head people are born those little babies oh you call them an angel Pfft. Yuck, bah humbug to you. That's an enemy of God. Like, how horrible is that? This little innocent child is going to start off its life thinking that it is an enemy of the most powerful person in the universe. And unless that little child submits to Stephen Led and his buddies, it will continue to be an enemy of God. It is so creepy that he says this i mean it is a little bit funny and i do think it's one of those instances where they make like an edit in the final cut of what you know comes on and sometimes we'll see like a little edit make and you're are made and you're like well i wonder what he was actually saying in that talk and this is a time where i'm like why didn't they cut that out like if he was going off script there that would be a pretty good time to just hit it with the old control B button and move right along with your day. But oh no, they left it right in. And my golly, is it a real whopper? Just trying to get children and starting the fear mongering the second they're born. You can't even take a second to call them an angel. Call them an enemy of God by golly. Why do I keep saying golly today? Dagnabbit. Dagnabbit's the new word. So, dear brothers and sisters, there's a brief synopsis of our wonderful three-day convention provided by the God of Peace that is coming our way. So, just his synopsis, not to get into the fact that this is all still in, like, the introductory phase. The convention hasn't really gotten started yet. And so the timestamp is, I think it's a full 45 minutes now. But just his brief synopsis was 13 minutes long. Imagine a 13 minute synopsis. It was brutal to sit there and listen to this twice, but I did it for you, the good people of YouTube. So if you enjoyed that, please drop a like on this video. I probably should stop doing that, but dag nabbit, I'm gonna keep going. Hey everyone, guess who just walked in? Olivia. Today's poll, would she ever? No, she would never, she's an angel. <laughs> I wanted to go up to the girls and smash their phones. Neutral? Ain't no neutral. You're just a coward. Take your trash. What I was feeling back then was just sadness. Never really peace. 
Hello everyone, Hayley from Junior Design here. Is there just a little bit of envy in there? In June of 2018, a huge group of armed men came to us. They represented the ideals of my childhood. Do you have any idea what this is gonna cost us? I didn't have a choice, you went behind my back. Where's your mask? Do you know how many people have actually gotten sick? Zero. That's what always happens when you're just about to lose all your strength. Jehovah does that something for you. I'm so grateful that we made peace before the world turned upside down. So here, Stephen Lett introduced a little preview of all of the videos that were going to be showed, or not all of them, but he said dozens of videos that were prepared. And I gotta say, it looks like we got some real hot topics, some real bangers coming our way. So I know I'm looking forward to it, but that is going to end at least this very first part, and probably either tomorrow or the day next, I will get into the next section of it. So I'm going to try and do these uh, fairly structured and be on time sometimes in the past. I know I've been a little bit late to the party, so I'm trying to be on top of it this time. Thank you so much for joining me for part one of my thoughts on part one of the first day of the convention. There's going to be a lot of uh, convention videos coming out, so I hope you guys don't mind getting bombarded with Wally and Zizi. But we're a couple of crazy, kooky cats, and uh, you know what? It, we'll just have some fun with it. So anyway, thank you so much for watching to the end, and I will see you guys next time. Probably in a different shirt, because this one smells. It was really hot in here.